What's up guys, it's Aaron from Gear Up and welcome to another episode and I'm so happy that you can join me today. This time we're going to be talking about the new $210 TCL 10L. And you're probably wondering, where have I heard that name before? It sounds so familiar, TCL. Well, they're the venerable television maker that recently has been giving brands like Vizio and Samsung a lot of grief and probably some sleepless nights as well for making really great television sets for budget prices. So the big question now is, what is a television company called The Creative Life or TCL for short doing in the smartphone business? Well, believe it or not, these guys have a buttload of experience already. TCL actually makes phones for brands they own, which you're familiar with. Alcatel, Blackberry, and Palm. So problem solved then, right? Actually, the smartphone world, as some of you may know, is a cruel, unkind place. And it's ready to prey on you if you show any kind of weakness. Which brings me to the TCL 10L. The 10L is marketed as a well-performing, feature-packed, low-price smartphone. So is it any good compared to the rest of the low to mid-range smartphones in a big sea of low to mid-range smartphones that are really awesome and good? Let's find out after these messages. Let's do it. <laughs> So here is the TCL 10L guys. What does your hard earned $210 get you in this case? Quite a bit actually, which thankfully is pretty standard fare for mid-range phones nowadays. The shell is modern as you can see and does not shout cheap. And running behind the scenes is the pretty reason Qualcomm 665 chip and Adreno 610 GPU together with six gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. And that's also expendable to 256 gigs. There's also the 6.53 inch 1080 by 2340 LCD panel with next vision automatic display adjustment. The screen also has 395 PPI density, which is not exactly the highest, but is pretty tight and has about 420 to 430 nits of maximum brightness, which makes it a little harder to see in direct sunlight than say the Moto G power that hits 500 nits. The 4,000 milliamp hour battery in this easily gives you a full day and a half of average usage, but mind you, this does not have quick charge. There's also the current trend of packing a camera array for the budding photographer or videographer at the back, as you can see. But there's more in the finer details, I believe. So let's look a little closer at the phone, shall we? Now, here we are at the front of the phone and let me turn this on real quick. The side bezels are narrow, as you can see, and less than what's on the Moto G, actually. The bottom chin is deeper than the top, but still pleasantly short for this category of phones. The seam where the screen edge meets the frame is tight and even all around, which says a lot about the manufacturing process. It's predominantly plastic with a metal frame, so taper your expectations here. But it does look good though. And say what you want about plastics, but they help keep the weight down as well as offer a little bit more protection against the drops and dings of daily life. The 10L weighs 180 grams. It feels pretty balanced in my hands and pocket. And by comparison, the Samsung A51, for example, weighs 172 grams and the Moto G stylus at 192 grams which all have the same battery capacity, by the way, so that's why I'm comparing all three of them. Up front, we have the earpiece flanked on the left by the 16 megapixel punch hole selfie camera, and all the relevant sensors are hidden in the forehead here. At the top, we have the near extinct 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone jack and the uh, microphone port right there, as you can see. The other microphone actually lives down here in one under one of the speaker grills, and at first sight, you might think, oh, there are two speakers. Well, you may be wrong. There's actually only just one driver, unfortunately. And these being downward or side firing speakers or speaker, depending on the orientation you hold it, is gonna be easily covered by your hand. And over here in the middle is the USB-C charging port, which is nice. On the right of the phone are the volume and power buttons made of plastic and properly placed for either left or right handers. Would have been nice if either of them were textured or something so my finger could differentiate between the two. Now, over on the left side, we have the SIM and micro SD card tray. And right below that is probably my favorite bit about this whole phone, which TCL calls the smart key, a multifunction button that you can set to perform almost everything, except maybe roasted chicken. Well, actually, hold on. Actually, you might be able to still do that because if you have a chicken in a Google-enabled Wi-Fi oven, you probably can still roast the chicken. But anyways, many makers from Samsung to Sony, yeah, have multifunction buttons too, but in practice, they're quite limited. TCL's implementation is quite extensive. You can set up single, double, or hold, 
And within each one, you can run a feature like launching Google Assistant or just Google Lens if you prefer, or launching the camera in pro mode or turning on the flashlights, yes, flashlights, or launch specific apps. And here's a tip. Like most other Android phones, double tapping the power button to launch the camera is also present here on the 10L, which means it frees up a smart key pairing for something else. Over at the back, the Mariano blue of this unit really pops and shows off its rainbow hues, especially as you view it or tilt it at different angles. What also really shows is fingerprints. Not a fan of that. There's also a bit of spacing uh, between the cover and the internal, so when I press on it like this, it indents under the pressure. And another thing, don't drop this in the toilet. It won't survive the immersion. That means it's not waterproof, guys. Here's the fingerprint sensor, which doubles as a rest for your index finger. The sensor itself is impressively rapid, and here it is compared to my admittedly older Pixel 2 XL. Not bad, right? Now, the camera array itself is really hard to miss. It's spread across like so, like looking like spider eyes or a cyclops or something. It's raised about one millimeter away from the body, so when you put this on a flat surface like a table, it's actually pretty stable though, because this thing spreads itself from a corner to corner. Here are the left and right flashes, and on the far left here is the main 48 megapixel camera, uh, which has face detection autofocus. Next to that is the two megapixel macro lens, which you should never use a 2 megapixel depth detection lens and the 8 megapixel 110 degrees, I believe, ultra wide. Uh, there's also the 16 megapixel selfie camera up front, which we saw earlier. Feel free to jump to the photos and video test uh, just ahead of time to see the samples if you want. But anyways, a pet peeve I have with primary and selfie cameras is when engineers and designers locate them in a corner. The 10L does this, here's the 48, and here's the selfie. I personally prefer, prefer them to be centered so it's easier to frame and align uh, all my shots. One problem I see with this camera spread as well is when you say take a portrait uh, photo of somebody, say about, especially about arm's length away, and you ask them to look at a camera, say cheese or something, and instead of looking at the primary lens, there is potential that they look at the wide angle or somewhere between. What happens is then you capture their eyes looking down like this sample right here. As I mentioned earlier, the 10L has two flashes, which means both of them are employed as flashlight bulbs. And when I first saw this, I was super excited. I thought we were gonna have some kind of ultra bright floodlights or something. But in fact, the combined lumens from the bulbs roughly equate to that of a single bulb flashlight on other phones. At least it's nice and white and easy to activate with smart key. So here now, we'll be comparing image samples between the TCL 10L with a Pixel 2 XL running C-Stark's Gcam app. And right out of the gate, you can see that the TCL captures sharp and detailed images. You could confidently print photo books or even 11 by 17 frame pictures with this thing. Now, the main camera is set by default at 12 megapixels, even though it has a 48 megapixel lens built in. You have to activate a mode called high pixel to use the 48 megapixel. There was also a huge hoo-ha about the TCL watermark being on by default when it was first launched, but that has been rectified with the latest update. Anyway, here is a picture of my kayak and again, the same shot with a wide angle on and it definitely pulls a lot more into the shot with that. Now I'm going to introduce the pixel into the mix. In real life, these blow valves are dark yellow, while the kayak in the background is more of a, I don't know, search and rescue orange. Now the 10L before the latest main firmware update rendered the valve light yellow and adds some psychedelic to the kayak's orange. Now here is its take after the update. I personally don't see much of a difference if any. So guys, comment down below if you see anything I'm not seeing. In this photo, I intended for the shot to focus on the main branch holding up the bird feeder in the foreground. The 10L again pushes warmer colors than the Pixel and therefore doesn't look as realistic. The brown of the branches have a wet look to them, the foliage in the background is way too green, but I must say though that the PDAF nailed the focus of the chains on the feeder and separates the foreground and the background with smoother bokeh than the pixel. Low light is where things fall apart for the TCL. Without something like Google's computational wits, it just turns the scene green, like the photo of this basket and it introduces tons of shadows in the lower left and upper right hand corner. And white balance is way, way off as well. The 16 megapixel selfie cam works pretty good actually. In this sample shot, the 10L's portrait mode performed comparably to the Pixel, which isn't saying much because as you can see, the bokeh separation on both kinda sucked. 
Now, I must admit, this was a challenging scene to begin with, like low light, cloudy day, I'm standing almost sideways, my cap creating a shadow on my face, and my glasses, or any glasses for that matter, are always a challenge for portrait mode for any phone. The Pixel decided to just blur out the corner of my glass frame on the right there, while the 10L gave a wide berth around it. The 10L's portrait mode has face tracking by the way, but from time to time it seemed to struggle to focus on me. And also, thank goodness you can turn beauty mode off. Now, video. The front can do 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is nothing to shout about nowadays. Some other mid-range phones can do 60. The rear cam does up to 4K at 30 frames per second, and both front and rear cams utilize some kind of electronic image stabilization, or EIS. Now, video processing is quite different in the 10L compared to photo mode, where the saturation is actually less aggressive. It verges on being realistic. The exposure of the sky, as you can see here, is not great, but neither is the pixels. And interestingly, the TCL does a great job brightening up the shadows just enough, like in the tree trunks. Image stabilization struggles more than the pixel, while the recorded sound is more hollow as well. So guys, if you haven't heard already, I am trying to get to 5,000 subs, and only you can get me there. If you haven't already then, please consider subscribing down below and turning on the bell notification icon. So thank you in advance for your help, and get me to 5,000. Back to the program. So let's get into the positives, and I'll tell you right off the bat is TCL knows how to make good screens. Not god level like Samsung, but pretty darn great for what you pay for. In this case, the colors and contrast are some of the best I've ever seen on an LCD display. The backlighting is even over most of the panel, except for maybe a little bit of shadowing around the front camera. And of course, LEDs excel at blacks and LCDs don't, but even so, I'm happy with the inkiness of the blacks here if inkiness is a way to describe things. And indirect sunlight though is where I wish the 10L was pushing a little bit more nits. Say when you're reviewing photos you just taken outside, can be kind of a bugger with the glare and all. So here is another pro tip guys, turn off the next vision feature or at least turn it on and off and try it out and see if it's something worthwhile keeping. What next vision is, is it automatically adjusts on the fly your screen's sharpness, contrast and saturation based on ambient light. But what I found is when it's on, saturation is crazy just out there and also it unnecessarily crushes dark areas like blacks. So with it off, it allows the TCL panel to sing, I believe. And as I mentioned earlier, the TCL panel is really that good. And this is how I see it. If I go to a restaurant and order a dish and when I get the dish, I don't drench it with condiments. I just wanna taste it the way the chef intended to. And if I later on decide I need condiments, then I add on to it. This is how I see the panel, the TCL panel, the LCD screen is so good that I don't need it to be clouded by Next Vision. And in this case, the condiment, the Next Vision just kind of sucks. And the next positive is the camera experience. The main camera especially takes well balanced and detailed shots in good light, especially after the recent May update. And the camera app is powerful enough for those who want to explore beyond the basics and be more creative. One of my favorite things about this phone is Smart Key, and it is one of the best multifunction key executions out there compared to other brands. The number of things you can program this key to do is pretty darn granular, which would be perfect for power users or anyone who likes more convenience out of their phones. And speaking of function, the Smart Key is located in the advanced features in settings, by the way. And if you look in there, I'm really digging how TCL has big tons of added functionality into what is basically a vanilla Android 10 phone. You can do things like launching selected apps in full screen mode or switching between game or driving mode. It's super convenient and awesome. My last like is a small one, but it makes a positive difference in multitasking. The last mid-range phone that I tested, the Moto G Power had four gigabytes of RAM. And I did say that the user experience was smooth and not sluggish for the most part until it came to things like game load times and switching between memory intensive apps. The 10L one ups the G power with two extra gigs of RAM for a total of six gigs, which on paper at least allows you to keep more apps running in the background before killing them off. Load times for games and apps also take a few less seconds as well. So things just feel a little bit snappier on the TSL. But that being said, I also did see some occasional stutters, which I think is more of an optimization issue, which hopefully TCL irons out through updates. So guys, one of the first cell phones with a two megapixel camera came out way back in 2005. Now, the 10L has a two megapixel macro lens, which I do not like. 
I've said this before in my other videos and I'm gonna say this again. This current trend of putting in macro cameras in mid-range phones is a total gimmick. So stay away guys. And allow me to throw in this close-up shot and you see what I mean of a branch and flanked by some plants taken from three centimeters away. It's, it's not good at all. The texture of the branch as you can see is a hot, un-instagrammable mess. There's some color accuracy issues, exposure issues, blurriness, and way more noise than a Deep Purple concert. So save yourself from social media shaming and just get a magnifying glass and take a picture of the object with the main camera or better yet, crop from a photo taken from that 48 megapixel high pixel mode. So I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm so over downward firing mono speakers, just like this one. It's so easily muffled and you know, it's blocked all the time. Now, I'm not sure if this is due because of budget or space constraints in the chassis, but TCL could have at least considered putting it as a rare word speaker uh, tucked under the camera here or something or above it. So when you put it on a flat surface like a table, it doesn't get muffled. Am I too crazy to think about that? Because the OG Moto X did it, and it did it with great effect and had decent stereo separation when it was in your palm like this. So it's not too far-fetched. Now, my last negative has to do with the update cycle. TCL did announce that the 10L will get at least Android 11 and with the possibility of Android 12, and also up to two years of firmware updates. But what no one is certain is how frequently those updates happen. So my experience has seen that this started out with an April update and then May update that came out recently and it's July and nothing has happened so far. So that doesn't bode well for this phone or TCL for that matter. So I'm putting this in the negatives until the update cycle or updates can happen more frequently. All right guys, we've come to the end. So it's time for me to give a score to this TCL 10L. After many hours of intense thinking on the toilet and consulting the greatest minds at the local daycare, I give this phone a score of 75.16, a solid C+, a solid smartphone to which I give a semi thumbs up to. I think this phone is perfect for those wanting a change or something fresh. If you're on a budget as well, definitely put this guy on your list. Now, the 10L may not be the best in its price range, but it does a lot of things right. On the other hand, this phone is not for you if you prefer mainstay brands, especially if you care about consistent update cycles or proven customer and tech support. It still remains to be seen how the TCLs is like in this latter regard. And this phone is also not for you, by the way, if you care about or want the best camera. The Pixel 3a and the iPhone SE are at the top of the mid-range game in this case, but they cost also, mind you, $120 to $150 more than the TCL. So with that said, guys, just go out and check out the TCL 10. Give it a chance and you may be surprised by what you find. I definitely was. The TCL brand is definitely not as known as the rest, obviously, but give it some time and hopefully it gains some traction and we'll be starting to make smartphones that are really good and on a budget, just like the televisions. Now, the 10L itself is a pretty balanced phone, aside from some uncertain update timelines, as well as no rapid charging, but that's a couple of big hiccups. I can almost guarantee if you're wait, willing to wait, the price is gonna drop in a few months, so it'll be a huge, nice discount. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode, and I hope you come back next Friday for a brand spanking new one. Now, if you'd like to see more content like this and would like to show your support, remember to click the subscribe button down below and mash that button and turn on the bell notification icon as well. And you can also visit my Patreon page to buy me a cup of joe or tea or something, or help me fund my endeavors here on Gear Up. And remember also to thumbs up if you like this video here. And thumbs down. Hmm. Thumbs down to pedal drive kayaks or pedal powered kayaks or kayakers to be specific because you always act so smug. So thumbs down to y'all. I had I encountered one a few days ago. I was pedaling on my normal kayak across the river and right on the other side there was someone with a pedal powered kayak talking loudly on their cell phones, hands free and all smug like with little tiny unexercised dinosaur T-Rex arms and elephant legs looking all important like. It almost looks like, it makes me feel like, you know, when you see the recumbent bicycles, they always look so much better than all of us as compared to us normal bicyclers. So thumbs down to pedal powered kayakers. Hmm. Well, that's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for watching. You are the best audience ever and I love you all so much. Remember to do something kind and nice for somebody this weekend or this week because the world needs it more than ever. Until next time, guys, I love you all and God bless. Peace out.